Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today we've got a look at a deep quake, solar forcing of zonal winds, and a complement study saying solar storms trigger tornadoes. But we've also got space weather to watch for a bit on the way as well, so let's start with the last 24 hours on our star. The sun was mostly quiet, but solar flaring is creeping up a bit in the new active regions. Small pops and surges were all we saw, but you may recall that yesterday morning we thought we saw a possible eruption signature, and while it was faint on coronagraphs, NOAA saw it too. They forecast the minor CME to arrive over the weekend, and it could produce low-level geomagnetic storm conditions when it arrives. That is indeed a very weak CME, but there is a clear space ahead of it after the coronal hole stream will be watching while we also monitor the sunspots. Several new groups crept over the limb the last day, so even without significant development in any of the groups we are seeing, got a bit more x-ray flaring activity up there this morning. Got eyes open on that front too. Top quake of the last day was a 6.3 in Indonesia. Not only is this part of the world ready and expecting big quakes, but this one was a deep blot echo down at the low velocity zone more than 100 kilometers deep and it's attenuated the shaking. First up in the science news today is this one. Wind patterns are confirmed for about the 40th time to be impacted by solar activity. But this one isn't even about solar flares or solar storm conditions. It's about the rotation rate of the sun and its impact on wind patterns comes all the way down to the surface. That exact conclusion was also reached by this team. They were looking for impacts of solar storms on tornadoes, and they found them to be more likely during CME impact and during the declining phases of coronal hole solar wind streams, having an impact on the lower atmosphere frontal boundaries and high shear environments via the aurorally generated atmospheric waves. Big supercell crosses the country while these waves interact, and the microsystems can start to spin. Excellent work there. Folks, it is the last week of pre-ordering our new book. To be honest, we're a little bit wide-eyed at how many we're already going to have to manage, but we will keep it open through the end of the month. Link is below. Check out the details of the pre-order. Folks, we've got a lot going on at Observer Ranch. Pretty much full for this weekend, but the homesteading camp next week and the tactical training have several spots available. It's high priority skills and survival knowledge on deck for those. And if you've been looking for a good time to come, turn of the month here is probably the way to go. But we've got another pole shift conference coming at the end of August and a lot happening this fall. Remember, Dr. Dunning is coming to Founders Weekend in September. If you're going to be at the Colorado Prepper Expo in October, why not stay with us at the ranch? It's a very convenient proximity. And folks, we are looking to fill the very last spot in the experience, October 17th through the 19th. This is the mental, physical, and spiritual prepping of oneself. All the plans and supplies isn't going to matter if you get scared or you break down. You have to be the strongest aspect of your prepping. This is how I did it, and I've brought the program to the ranch. Special link for that below, and to the pre-order, and of course to ObserverRanch.com itself. Probably worth it to click at least one of those links here today. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.